Today's Take 5 topic is about restoration pricing, specifically the challenges that many in the industry face with software and dealing with the pricing situation. And today I'm going to visit with Anthony Nelson, who's a member of the board of the Restoration Industry Association, RIA, and also serves on the AGA Pricing Feedback Committee. So I have a feeling that Anthony knows a thing or two about pricing and like uh, software like Xactimate and others out there. So Anthony, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. Looking forward to your feedback in the next five minutes. So let's get right into it. Why don't you start off with, tell us about how powerful pricing software such as Xactimate is for restoration companies. I mean, that, that, that question in itself sets up like this whole conversation around the dichotomy of standardized pricing, right? There is a huge benefit to having it. And there is also a huge challenge that it presents. And so, you know, just to put it into a bucket, when the pricing works for your business, it is a good thing because you don't have to go out and you don't have to do the traditional things of surveying material pricing, reinventing your labor rates every time you give somebody a raise. Um, those things are to the positive, but when it doesn't function well for you, it becomes a challenge because then you are forced to substantiate any changes that you make to that price list. Okay, so that sets up a challenge. If you don't agree with a suggested price, if you need to charge more, but the price is lower or whatever the situation is, what do you do? What are your options? And so <laughs> with a big brush, you have two options. Do something about it or not, right? Okay. And, and, and I'll double click on you know the one that everybody cares about, like if they choose to do something about it. But I also think it's mindful to take a look at the projects or a group of projects or a subsection of work that you're receiving and ask the question, is it worth the disruption for me to kick over the apple cart just because the price of a box of screws is 20% less than what I buy them off the shelf at Home Depot. And so I, I caution that because I feel like a lot of uh, restorers nowadays are anxious to pick up the sword and go charge into battle and fight this fight. But you really need to ask the question, is that what's in the best interest of your business and how much do you stand to gain? Now, if you do stand to gain a lot by developing and customizing the existing price list and Xactimate, I have found that the greatest thing you can do to substantiate it is to find relevant publicly available resources to showcase the change that you're making and why. And you can do this in a variety of different ways. It depends on what you're trying to change. Um, for materials, okay, every Xactimate sheet I've written in the past three years has a litany of hyperlinks of what the actual material cost off the shelf from Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, whatever your vendor of choice is, and it, you know, and what, you know, kind of substantiating, hey, Xactimate says it's X. We buy it at X, here's the here's the information. And if you're providing that collateral, a lot of the times people don't have a ton of questions. Um, if it's subcontractors where we found success, you know, particularly bid items where it's a combination of labor material equipment, uh, what we've done is we'll take, we'll go back across our history in the past year, just using laminate countertops as an example. And I will do an analysis of three different bids, know that they're under and adjust the price up based on the average of those three bids. And then if, you know, an adjuster or somebody in a claims position has questions about that, then I will supply that information as my collateral to say, look, this is why we made this change. It wasn't just because we said it's low and it needs to be higher and marked it up 30%. No, there's some supporting collateral that we're providing here. Okay, it makes sense. Now, my last question, we have about a minute and a half. Okay. If you're if you're gonna send, if you wanna send pricing feedback to Xactimate or your software company of choice. Yes. Tell us about that. So, you know, over the years as I've submitted pricing feedback to Xactimate, there's, there's a couple different rules I follow. Number one, keep it simple. Never make the email that you're sending to pricing at exactware.com or whatever feedback you're providing greater than one item or one specific component. 
one of the biggest mistakes I made was I sent them a list of a hundred things that were wrong and it, it like, it can't land, you know, they, they would have a ticketing system. And so it's easier that way. Um, number two is provide that supporting collateral. And so then that way your feedback is being well received. And then outside of the envelope of Xactimate, I think we as restorers can do a better job of informing the clients that we work with every day when we're making changes to the price list upstream of submitting estimates to them for review. So every month, I would encourage all restorers that have a custom price list to send that information on what they're customizing and why upstream of submitting an estimate. Okay. Well, good advice. Uh, we appreciate it, Anthony. It, it makes my respect for restoration contractors go up even more with all the things you do besides doing the work, all the stuff in the background. So keep up the good work and thank you for helping the industry. Absolutely, Jeff. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm super humbled. And if there's any way we can support ISSA, let me know. Thank you.